I tried to beat Pokemon Legends Arceus under hardcore Nuzlocke rules, using only the new Alpha Pokemon. My favorite new feature and the giant forms of Pokemon that I wanted for so long. Unlike you, Dr. Max. But with the new battle system and one of the most challenging boss fights of any Pokemon game, would I be able to complete it? Alpha Pokemon have no statistical advantage and are just like regular Pokemon, aside from the fact that they're bigger and occasionally know rare moves for that Pokemon type. The rules for this playthrough will be in the description, but in summary are If one of my Pokemon faint, it can no longer be used. I must catch the first random alpha encounter in each area, but will be allowing some static encounters. No items in battle. The level cap is the highest level fight in each area. And I must take on every noble Pokemon in a Pokemon battle. Okay, with the rules out of the way, let's get into the run. Hello? Can you hear me now? Good. Unfortunately, the starters are alpha and shiny locked until later in the game, so the Nuzlocke begins at the first mini boss and my starter for the playthrough, Alpha Cricketoon. I caught and named him Alpha. And just check out the size difference between a regular and an Alpha Cricketoon. It's so satisfying. Why catch them all when I can just catch all the giant ones? On my way to quell the frenzied noble Pokemon, Cleavor, I stop at Tidewater Dam, where I catch my next team member, Boris the Alpha Bibarel. At the Grand Tree, Leanne tries to scare us off with a Pokemon battle. I'm terrified. But his Gumi is no match for my Alpha Bibarel and we take it out in one hit with an Icy Wind. However, Erida is still in my way of confronting Cleavor, and the battle was more challenging than I anticipated. Boris almost went down to a Swift before finishing off the Glaceon with a Water Pulse. To defeat the frenzied Pokemon, I have to throw bombs of his favorite food at him until his rage is quelled. I take playing with my food to the next level and battle Cleavor. I lead Boris who takes a Stealth Rocks before almost bringing down the frenzied Pokemon with a Water Pulse. An Air Slash leaves Boris with just 26 HP before we finish off the Noble Pokemon with another Water Pulse. With the Noble Pokemon now defeated, I can find random Alpha Pokemon in the wild, so I head to the Obsidian Fieldlands to hunt the next Alpha Pokemon for my team. Down in the Horseshoe Plains, I came across an Alpha Mime Jr. I caught and named Jagger, because he got the moves like Jagger. I return to the village, where I forgot I had my next Pokemon battle with Ray. Jagger is my start, and obliterates Ray's Mom Jr. with a Shadow Ball. Pikachu comes in next and uses Quick Attack twice in a row, taking out Jagger. You are shitting me! I bring in Boris to avenge Jagger's death and take out the Pikachu with a Bulldoze. Before I head to the new area, the Crimson Mirelands, I look to add a new member of my team, and in Aspiration Hill, I found a Drift Loon I caught and named Fantina. In the Crimson Mirelands, I had to deal with Volo, and I was surprised how easy this battle was. Fantina was able to set up with a Calm Mind before sweeping Volo's Togepi and Gibble with Shadow Ball. Shortly after, I took on Coin and her Toxicroak. I accidentally led Boris instead of Fantina, but luckily, he tanks the Rock Smash and can finish the Toxicroak with back-to-back -back Bulldoze. I can now take on Ursaluna, but first, I want to try and catch another Alpha Pokemon for my team. And in Deer Track Heights, I find a Stantler I call Jade. Sadly, it's level 27, just above my level cap, so I won't be able to use it until after I defeat Ursaluna. I start the battle with Boris and go for a Water Pulse, but a Baby Doll Eyes into a Slash from Ursaluna does significant damage. I now have to decide whether to switch out Boris, risking another team member, or sacrifice him. I choose to stay in and risk it. I go for a strong style water pulse, hoping for KO. But without a crit, Ursaluna survives and Boris goes down to another slash. I bring out Alpha to end the battle with an X scissor. With Ursaluna defeated, I can now take on the next frenzied Pokemon, Lilligant. Since Ursaluna isn't a frenzied Pokemon, I can't find random Alpha Pokemon in the wild just yet. Which I didn't realize at first and wandered around the Mirelands for a while. But finally, with no luck, I head back to the Obsidian Fieldlands, where in the Heartwood I find a Beauty Fly. I continue the main story and take on the frenzied Pokemon, Lilligant. I lead Alpha. Lilligant misses a Poison Powder before a four times super effective, strong style Aerial Ace takes her out. After the battle, I evolve Fantina into a Drift Blim. And 
search again for random alpha Pokemon in the Mirelands. But I'm not disappointed, and in the shrouded ruins, I find a Routes who I can immediately evolve into a Curlia. And with the help from a Dawnstone found in a space-time distortion, I can evolve it into a Glade that I call Brawly. I arrive in my new location, the Cobalt Coastlands, where Irida is waiting for a Pokemon battle. This time, I have to face off against her Glaceon and a Eevee. The battle can be tricky, but Brawly easily defeated both of her Pokemon with Drain Punch. To continue the main story, I have to earn Basket Legion's trust and make his favorite food. Mm -mm, good. Before I take on my next main story battle, I evolved Jade by beating up Geodude in the Crimson Mirelands, and ended up catching my next team member, a Geodude I name Brock. He is level 39, so once again I will not be using him until after the noble boss fight. But I still evolve him into a Graveler right away, and then head back to town where I can purchase the Link Cable and evolve Brock into his final form, Golem. This is actually the first time I've ever used a Golem in a Pokemon playthrough. The Bandit Trio showed up and kidnapped one of Paulina's Growlithe. So as a true Pokemon hero, I head to Fire Spit Island to save the day. Here I have to take on all three of the Miss Fortune sisters in succession, without any breaks. I start the fight against Clover and go for a Mystical Fire, dropping Obama Snow's attack and almost getting the KO. An Ice Shard, followed by an Icicle Crash, damages Fantina before another Mystical Fire is able to take it out. Coin and her Toxicroak are next, but it quickly gets taken out with an extra sensory, leaving only Charm, who leads the battle with a Rhydon. I switch out Fantina for Chance, who can take out the Rhydon in one hit with Energy Ball, leaving only Charm's ace Pokemon, Gengar, left. But it immediately takes out Chance with a critical hit, Venoshock. So I bring Fantina back out and take out the Gengar with a strong style Shadow Ball. After the battle, Arcanine gets struck by lightning, meaning it's time for one of the most challenging noble boss fights in the game. Arcanine starts off the fight with a crunch, doing over half of Jade's HP. Luckily, I get to attack twice in a row and can finish off the Arcanine with multiple bulldoze. Shortly after, we get the final blow to end the battle and return Arcanine to normal. With Arcanine now defeated, I can now find random alphas in the Cobalt Coastlands, and at the starting beach, I find an Alpha Glamiao named Luna, that I catch and evolve into a Perugly. Before I'm able to head to the new area, Coronet Highlands, I have to battle Adamant. Still, his Pokemon are no match for Fantina, who takes Leafeon out with a Mystical Fire leaving only Eevee, who can't even damage us because of our ghost typing. The Coronet Highlands is where I meet my least favorite character in Pokemon Legends Arceus, Melly, Electrode's Warden. He tries to stop us from reaching the frenzied Pokemon with a battle. His Skunk Tank lands a Night Slash on Brock before it gets taken down with two Bulldoze. I have to prove myself in battle before Ingo will help get Sneasler to aid me. Ingo starts the fight with his Machoke, and I lead Alpha, and go for an Aerial Ace right away. That doesn't entirely take it out. A bullet punch followed by a double edge brings Alpha to just 36 HP, so I switch out to Fantina to finish off the match oak with an extra sensory. In comes Tangela and paralyzes Fantina with a stun spore, before getting taken out with a mystical fire. Ingo's last Pokemon is Gliscor. It uses an agile style aerial ace, raising its action speed, allowing it to go for another aerial ace before it almost goes down to an icy wind but just barely hangs on and brings Fantina to low HP with another Aerial Ace. I don't want to risk losing a Pokemon to the potential RNG of Paralysis, so I switch out to Brawly, which was a big mistake, as he barely survived an Aerial Ace before an Ice Punch finally takes out the Gliscor. With the help of Sneasler, I can finally reach the Noble Pokemon, but Melly tries one final attempt to stop me. This time, it's a 3-on-1. I lead Brock and try to remove the biggest threat Skunk Tank first, with a strong style bulldoze, but it survives, and a hypnosis plus a critical hit night slash leaves Brock with low HP. Another bulldoze would KO, but I don't risk him getting drowsy and switch to Luna to finish off the remaining three Pokemon. With Melly out of the way, I can finally take on my fourth frenzied noble Pokemon, Electrode. I send in Drifloom for the first battle, which is weak to electric type moves, but is very bulky. We dodge the first thunder before going for a mystical fire, lowering the noble Pokemon's attack 
and barely doesn't get the KO. The following Thunder does three quarters of Fantina's HP, and if the first Thunder hit, I would have been in big trouble. But another Mystical Fire finishes off the Electrode, and this might shock you, but I don't risk sending in any more Pokemon into battle after this point. So the fight takes a bit of time, but I manage to calm the Noble Pokemon, returning him to normal. With the fourth Noble Pokemon defeated, I now have to head to the last location, the Alabaster Icelands, and face the final Noble Pokemon. But first, I have to take on Ray. But Brock can one-shot all of his Pokemon, so the battle doesn't take too long. Before I go to the Icelands, I want to trade out my Pokemon and look for some more Alpha encounters. I head back to the Cobalt Coastlands, where I haven't had many encounters, and will have less worry about my encounters being above my level cap. Here, I find a Vulpix, I evolve into a Ninetales with a Firestone. Welcome to the team, Azula. In the Alabaster Icelands, I am now introduced to Garrick, Avalug's Warden, who wants to test our strength in a Pokemon battle. He has two Ice types, and I have a Ninetales, so this isn't much of a fight. At this point in the game, the battles get a bit more challenging. I have to face Sabi next, and this can be a brutal fight, as you have to face her Rhyperior, Magmortar, and Electivire simultaneously. I figured Brock is my best option, and hit the Rhyperior with an Iron Head. He hits back with a high horsepower, doing over half my health. I finish off the Rhyperior with another Iron Head before getting poisoned. Luckily, I can finish off the two remaining Pokemon with Bulldoze and win the fight just before I would have fainted to poison damage. Before I face the frenzied Avalug, I want to get a few more levels on my Pokemon. While out defeating Alpha Pokemon in the Coronet Highlands, I added two new encounters to my team. A Gligar, and my favorite Pokemon, the real Grim Shady, Ghastly. It's only level 36, so it's going to the box for now until I level it up. And now, all that was left to do was to face the final noble Pokemon, Avalug. He is four times weak to fighting moves, so I lead Brawly and go for a Drain Punch that does over half of Avalug's HP. A Mountain Gale misses, and another Drain Punch takes out the Colossal Pokemon. All five Frenzy Pokemon have been quelled, and I am rewarded with... Exile? I'm so angry with Commodore's decision that I head to the Three Lakes and take my frustration out on the Alpha Pokemon that dwell there. Gudra, Zorark, and Overquill. I have no issues with the Gudra or Overquill, but the Zorark is a different story. I send in Luna, and immediately, the Zorark hits us with a Snarl. I go for an Agile Style Night Slash into a Strong Style Night Slash to guarantee the KO, but somehow it just barely survives. And because I use a Strong Style move, it can now set up with a Nasty Plot before taking down Luna with a Snarl. A Night Slash from Alpha wins us the battle. Defeating all three Alphas means I now obtain the Red Chain and can head to Mount Coronet, where I have two of the most challenging battles of the game. First up is Benny. I forgot that I had Booker in front, so I immediately switch to Fantina. Miss Magius misses the Hypnosis, and I can take it out with Shadow Ball. Gardevoir comes in next and sets up with a Calm Mind, followed by a Psychic that does about half of Fantina's HP. An Agile Shadow Ball into a Strong Shadow Ball is enough to finish the Gardevoir. Glade can attack twice because we used a Strong Style move, and starts with a Swords Dance, raising its attack and my heart rate, before finishing off Fantina with a Psycho Cut. <laughs> I bring in Azula, who does considerable damage with a Shadow Ball, and gets the defense drop. Benny heals with a Max Potion, allowing the Glade to live the next Shadow Ball. Azula almost goes down herself to a Drain Punch, before we finally take it out. Sneasler is Benny's last Pokemon and almost takes out Azula with a quick attack before I can bring out Brawly and end the battle with a 4 times super effective Psycho Cut. Komodo is next, but first I replace Fantina with my now evolved Alpha Gengar before I face him. Komodo's team is no joke, but they are slow and speed is king in this game. I start the battle with a Shadow Ball from Azula that forces Komodo to use his Max Potion. I get off another Shadow Ball before he decides to switch out his Braviary into a Snorlax. I immediately switch to Brawly for a better type matchup. We take a Zen Headbutt, but a Drain Punch restores our HP, but a Giga Impact leaves Brawly at low HP 
before we finish off the Snorlax with another Drain Punch. We restore a bit of HP, but not enough, as Braybrary returns and takes us out with an Air Slash. I go into Alpha and take down the Braybrary with a Night Slash. But taking out a trainer's Pokemon in this game isn't always rewarding. As Golem comes in next and immediately brings down Alpha with a critical hit, Rock Slide. I bring Azula back out and can finish off Commodore's two remaining Pokemon. After the tragic battle, I decided to replenish the team with some new Pokemon, so I headed back to the Alabaster Icelands where I hadn't caught any Pokemon yet. There I added a Asuian Sneasel named Rhonda and Bing Bong the Bronzong. With Commodore defeated and my team prepared, it's time to take on Dialga. I lead Gliscor, who can bring Dialga into catch range with an Earth Power, before surviving a roar of time on just 52 HP. I yeet an <coughs> Ultra Ball that catches Dialga on the first try. With Dialga captured, there is only one more battle for the main story. Origin form, Palkia. Okay, technically, there was another battle with Charm before, but nothing happens except for Azula KOing both her Pokemon in one hit. In the final fight with Palkia, I never actually got to do battle. The first two times I beat him, I never even got the option, and the third time I missed by throwing the Pokeball through his legs. And having almost no HP left, instead of restarting the battle for the fourth time, I finished its remaining health, then threw the Origin Ball, catching it and saving the world. But technically, it wasn't a noble boss fight, so I didn't actually break my rule. Right? The world may be saved, but the Nuzlocke isn't over yet. I still have to take on the biggest challenge of the Nuzlocke in my final battle with Volo. But first, I have to collect the remaining plates. But before I start, I head to the Alabaster Icelands, where a mass outbreak of Gibble appeared. Here, I find and catch an Alpha Gibble I name Cynthia. It turns out Komodo had been holding on to the Fist Plate all along. So I head to Prelude Beach and face him in a Pokemon battle. Azula starts the fight and takes out his golem with an energy ball. His next Pokemon, Snorlax, decimates Azula with a critical hit high horsepower. But a swords dance followed by a close combat from Rhonda finishes off the Snorlax. Before Clefable comes in and immediately goes for a four time super effective psychic to take out Rhonda. The back and forth of this fight doesn't stop here. Gengar takes out the Clefable with Sludge Bomb before going down to multiple Esper Wings from Braviary. I bring in Brock to knock out the Braviary with Thunder Punch. At this point, I had already lost three Pokemon and it would have been four if it wasn't for Komodo throwing the fight by using an agile close combat before going for a Swords Dance, allowing Brock to survive and take it out with a Fire Punch. After another tragic battle with Komodo, I added the rest of the Pokemon from my pasture to my party. Still, I needed a few more encounters. To save me a little bit of time, I decided to catch static encounters for the remaining Pokemon. In the Obsidian Fieldlands, I catch an Alpha Infernape I call Kong. After I headed to the Coronet Highlands, where I had planned to catch a static Alpha Clefable, but instead found a random Alpha Cleffa. I named her Clear. While I was leveling up my team, Cynthia accidentally overleveled, meaning I couldn't use her in my final battle, so I put her in the pasture and caught an Alpha Gudra at level 70, who I also named Cynthia. I now only had one challenge left. So once I had all the remaining elemental plates, I headed to the Temple of Sinnoh, where I had my final battle. Volo leads with Spirit Tomb. I go with Brock, and a Fire Punch causes Volo to switch Spirit Tomb out for Garchomp who immediately goes for Earth Power, bringing Brock to low HP. I go for an Agile Bulldoze and see that I won't be able to take it down. So I switch out into Cynthia to finish off the Garchomp with Dragon Pulse. We barely survive close combat from Lucario, but quickly take it out on the following turn with a Flamethrower. But with no chance to swap out, Arcanine comes in and finishes Cynthia with a Raging Fury. I bring Brock back out to return the favor by taking out Arcanine with a Bulldoze. I get lucky, and Volo's Rose Raid misses a Petal Blizzard, allowing me to switch out into Booker and take it down with an Aerial Ace. I also finish Togekiss with Poison Jab before Spirit Tomb returns to end Booker with a Dark Pulse. 
But with Spirit Tomb at low HP, it's safe to bring Brock back out and complete the battle with a bulldoze. Until he brings out Jaratina, who I have to defeat twice in a row without any healing. Brock has a very important part in this battle, sacrificing himself for the rest of the team. Job well done, sir. I only have three Pokemon left, but only two of them have coverage against Jaratina. I start with Weirdare, who boosts its defense and chips away at the legendary's health with Psy Shield Bash, before finally going down to a Dragon Claw. I put my faith in Kong that a bulk up plus a strong style Shadow Claw will get the KO. And he pulls through, leaving only Jaratina's origin form. And Earth Power finishes Kong, leaving the fate of the run with Claire. I start with a Calm Mind to boost my offensive and defensive stats before going for a Draining Kiss. Jaratina misses a Shadow Force and another Draining Kiss almost KOs. The next Shadow Force lands, making it obscure and my attacks less likely to hit. But we don't miss and land the finishing blow to end the battle this time for real, with just one Pokemon left. And that is how I beat a Pokemon Legends Arceus Hardcore Nuzlocke with only Alpha Pokemon. And I can't forget to mention <laughs> Clefable, who not only kissed her way to victory, but also into our hearts. Aww. And if you enjoyed the content of this video and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and little bell icon to get notified whenever I publish a new video. Thanks for watching. Bye.